Chloe. Hey. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Chloe, do you have the um, the link for the survey? I do, yeah. Okay, sounds great. Chloe, can you confirm you can see my screen? Um, not at the moment. How about now? Yeah. Okay, great. So Chloe, I think you can start letting people in. So while this is going on, just make sure that we're admitting everybody while I'm presenting. Welcome in. Um, we just have a quick survey for you to fill out that will help both us and you get you the information that you need. So um, I'll send it in the chat. And if you could just fill it out before we begin, that would be great.
For those of you who just joined us, um, I'm going to send a link in the chat with um, uh, for a survey, and it would be great if you could fill that out so it gives us a little bit more information about what you're looking to learn today. Hey, good morning, everybody. If you would be so kind to please uh, fill out the survey. Uh, right now I'm looking at it. It doesn't look like anybody has completed it. I'm um, just gonna wanna get an idea of who's on the call and uh, what you're looking to learn today in, uh, in the Center of Excellence presentation. So we'll get started in a few minutes, wait for a few others to, to file in and we'll start get started about three minutes after the top of the hour. All right, we're going to go ahead and wait one more minute and then we'll kick things off. All right, everybody, uh, we're going to go ahead and kick things off um, today. So if you haven't completed the survey, uh, please do so. So Chloe's going to go ahead and uh, put the link in there if you haven't um, completed the survey yet. Um, as if you all have been on the call before, my name is Greg Gillespie. I am a principal here at Collective um, and I'm excited to deliver to you um, a presentation today based upon Power BI Center of Excellence and what that's all about. So before we actually get started, just want to give a quick overview of a little bit, a little bit about about who Power BI is. I mean, I'm sorry, who Collective is and what we're all about. So we are a strategy and consulting firm, and we specialize in data analytics, 
um, AI and planning. So if those are any areas that you are looking to uh, that you need help with, those are the those are the three areas that we can help you exceed in. So we have a wide range of consultants that are based all across the US and some in Canada as well. And we specialize in helping, like I said, helping those organizations with analytics, AI planning, all from within the Microsoft stack. And that includes, you know, platforms like Power BI, which we'll be talking about today. Also Power Apps, Power Automate, and then all the other Azure services that normally surround all of those different types of offerings. So anything that really involves storing your data, moving your data or transforming your data. So there's really three ways that we help organizations, and that's really in the strategy implementation or support support plans. So if you're looking to get started within within Power BI and you're not really sure how to start, that's where the strategy comes into play. If you're interested in putting in place a center of excellence or data governance, like we'll be talking about today, that's also more of a strategy type of approach. And then we move into implementation where we're actually implementing that center of excellence, implementing that data governance, um, Power BI project, whatever you're looking to do. And then usually come, you know, after those projects, there is post project support, or maybe you have a BI team that needs to bounce ideas off of your, um, that needs to bounce ideas off of other industry experts that we have on staff. And that's where we can help help you out as well. So that being said, thanks again for joining today. Um, if you're new to the Collective Academy, we do we host these every Thursday. This is the last one for March, as we have a few uh, we have a few events coming up in the next couple of weeks. If you are in finance and you are um, you are attending um, AFP's Finex, we'll be having a couple of presentations that you can check out on our on our website. If you are attending those, please check us out um, and, and attend some of our sessions. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and dive into today's presentation which is called creating a center of excellence with Power BI. Um, before I actually do that, I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at the survey. So if you have um, taken the survey, I really do appreciate, appreciate you doing that. I just wanna see what everybody is interested in learning today when it comes to COE. So there's some that just wanna see what's involved with uh, a center of excellence um, and just really, just really anything associated with Power BI. So all good questions in here. People are wanting to see best practices to achieve a COE um, and others are just really wanting to learn what Power BI is all about and, what, and uh, how they can implement that in their organization. So I think by the end of today's presentation, you'll have an understanding of what a center of excellence is and how you can actually utilize it in your organization. All right, so a few things before we as, as we kick off, I just want to kind of go over the goals of what this presentation is going to be all about. So I really just want to share the best practices associated with creating, you know, a Power BI Center of Excellence. Um, you're going to hear some best practices of how I feel a Center of Excellence helps drive adoption um, throughout your throughout your organization. So if you've already implemented Power BI, a COE is really a key aspect of helping with adoption or making sure that Power BI is continually continuously utilized throughout the organization as well. And then the last point I want to make is this very this very last comment. I want this to be interactive. So if you guys have questions, you know, Chloe's going to keep an eye on the chat for me and uh, let me know if there's any questions that come through. So just let me know what you have. If something doesn't seem clear or you're just kind of curious about how you might actually uh, implement one of these things that I'm going to be going over. Um, and then the agenda, I'm going to go go into a quick high level introduction of what a BI of what a Power BI Center of Excellence is. Um, and then we're going to go over pretty well what we what we feel is the the main pillars of that center of excellence. So sponsors, governance, communication, and then a well defined process to ensure that this is continuously in, per, in place. Um, and then we're going to kind of go over some easy. If there's enough time, we're going to go over some easy BI processes that you can implement throughout your organization um, that are all that should all be stored within your COE. Before we get started, and for those of you who have seen my slideshows before. I apologize if you see my old material from time and time again, um, but this here, the guy on the left, this is your life with a Power BI Center of Excellence, and this is your life without a Power BI Center of Excellence. So this is actually me. This was me before I learned about COE. So it's like the fountain of youth, um, and everybody's rolling over in their chairs right now. Normally we give these in person, and hopefully I'd get a few chuckles out of the audience. So that's what I'm envisioning right now, guys. All right, so that being said, what is a COE? So 
Um, a COE is what it says here on the screen. It's a permanent multidiscipline team empowered to define, develop, and provide governance for business intelligence across the enterprise. Well, that's a mouthful. What does it actually mean? It's basically, it's this body that is going to sit. It's, it's basically like a, another department that pretty well defines and it controls all your processes, all your documentation, all your policies associated with your Power BI. So, you know, how do we build Power BI reports? How are we going to have continuous training? How are we going to, you know, what are all the rules? Who's in charge of what? The center of excellence is basically, it's just that place that everything is going to be stored. You know, when we talk about data governance and we talk about single versions of the truth. Well, who determines the single version of the truth? Who, who's in charge of making sure that this, once the report has gone through the ringer, how do we make sure it gets published to a workspace? You know, what workspaces are deemed to be production? What are, what are deemed to be tests? What are deemed to be development? That, that's all things that the center of excellence center of excellence does it's all those areas is to kind of it's to keep it's basically to keep everything in line and uh prevent that wild west of reports from going on um and some of the primary goals associated with the center of excellence so some of those things i've already said but it's it's really to ensure that you know your power that power bi is aligned with corporate strategy so we we, we implement a lot of visioning um, programs sometimes where you know an organization's wanting to get started with power bi and um, they just don't know how to get start. Well, you got to have that that top level approach, the corporate strategy. OK, where are we at now and where do we want to take Power BI? So the center of excellence really needs to be aligned with that strategy so that you can make sure that as you're implementing things, as you're like delegating who's in charge of what, um, it's in sync with, you know, the, with the corporate goals. Um, that second piece, we talked about adoption earlier. Think about this. If if you don't have these, you, you may not need a center of excellence if you're just deploying your first Power BI report. But if you really want to drive adoption throughout the rest throughout your organization, you're going to need to have something in place that makes sure that you know this is how we build reports. This is what this is the correct data to be building our reports off of, um, and that's really going to drive adoption because if you don't have that. People aren't going to trust your reporting. They're going to think things are hectic and chaotic, and they're just going to go back to using the other tools they've used before, whether that's Excel, some old archaic reporting system, because they're not going to trust. They're going to feel it's unorganized and they're not going to like what's going on. Um, and then really it's, it's providing those, those standard, sustainable, scalable enterprise wide environment. So if you're starting small, the COE is going to put things in place that will allow you to scale and become a larger um, and, and really deploy that larger enterprise wide uh, reporting throughout your organization. So, you know, we've talked about what Power BI is, you know, what the goals of it, what the, what the goals are, you know, what does it actually solve? Um, so if we're really looking to see what that center of excellence actually solves. If, if, if has anybody on the on the call heard of the Wild West of reporting? If you have, hopefully it's because it's not what's going on inside of your organization. If it's what's going on inside of your organization, no worries. If you put policies in place like we're I'm going to be going over today, you should be able to kind of reel things back a little bit and kind of get a little bit more of a handle of what's going on inside your organization. But Wild West of Reports basically comes down to is, you know, you have all these reports in place, but you may not know who the owners are, who they've been published to, where they've been shared to. Um, so Center of Excellence really says, you know, this who this is who is in charge of publishing their reports. This is where it goes. This is their purpose, all those different things. It also helps with Power BI adoption struggles. I already went over that on the previous slide, but again, if you're if you're having problems adopting Power BI in your organization, that could be because there's no formalized way of deploying that out throughout your um, throughout your um, organization. And a lot of times what I see, you know, adoption struggling for for end users and you know, what we've seen, you know, at other clients that we worked with, it really kind of boils down to the data. So if you start presenting reports out there and you start giving individuals, you know, reports that the data is wrong or they they are not actually trusting the data, that's just going your adoption levels are going to just go downhill immediately because no one's going to want to look at a report that they can't trust. Um, and again, they're going to go back to doing their old their old processes, slow ways of building reports out. Um, and then at the end of the day, the COE helps standardize um, how you, you know, anything associated with Power BI. 
And, and that's key because that, again, that also drives back to adoption, because if you have standardized practices and if you have standardized methods, um, that's going to, that's just going to increase adoption because people are going to be comfortable with how their reports are built. And, you know, you, you're going to turn your, your Power BI reporting into a well greased machine that, um, if, you know, everybody in the organization knows exactly how, how we basically roll Power BI out throughout, throughout um, our company. And then, um, you know, last but not least is who is a center of excellence for? And the answer is it's 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 for anybody. It doesn't matter if you're an enterprise organization or if you're a medium or a small. You know, if you got if you're a small shop and you're the only um, let's say you're the only Power BI developer um, and you have, you know, you got a, a handful of report builders, you can still have a center of excellence. You may not call it that. You just may say, hey, here are great standards for, you know, building Power BI. The whole idea is just to have you got to have some of these things in place. And like I said, if you're an enterprise organization, you definitely need one because then because you definitely need to make sure you have a handle of where your data is at from a governance perspective. But then how how policies and how that what your standards are in place to, to ensure that, you know, for one single version of the truth Two, we need to ensure that all of our reports are getting published to the correct locations. You know, we have report builders, we have publishers, we have contributors, all those different, um, all the, all that different terminology that Power BI uses to help you basically put these things in place. And then same thing with the medium sized organization. It's, you know, it's somewhere in the middle between a small and enterprise um, as far as the size of a COE and how, and how you really need to to look at um, implementing this. So end of the day, it doesn't matter what size you are, uh, you need to have it. All right, so a few things that we kind of look at, you know, when we're when we're talking about when we're thinking about Power BI. So there's a report development process. You know, there's a process for requirements gathering, you know, building out our measures, um, laying out the report. You know, what does that report development process look like? There's things called BI lifecycle management to where if I have a report built and I want to make a change to it, I want to make an addition to it, maybe a new visual, you know, add a measure, whatever that looks like, data set. What is that lifecycle management? What's the internal processes? Um, data governance, certified data sets for self-service BI, and then documentation. Documentation is huge, guys. Like so once I build a report, how do I keep track of that report? Once I build a measure, how do I know that you know gross profit is the right you know is the right way that gross profit is calculated? And then our data data dictionary, where's that at? Well, the the question that we have for these three or these five items, and there's many more than this. These are just some of the the top five that always come to mind for me. You know, how do we adopt this? And then the answer to that is simply we adopt that you know by building out a center of excellence. And you know by building out a center of excellence, you can put these things in place. Um, it's set in stone, say this is how it's always has, always has to be done. And the other thing is, you know, whether we like to say it or not, you know, people in our, on our organizations, they leave. They either, they either, you know, you know, they retire, they're lucky enough to retire, or they may find a different opportunity. They realize they don't want to work in this industry anymore. So when people leave your organization, or even better, when they come back on board, when they, when someone comes on board, you want to have a centralized location that they can basically go directly to and understand this is how we do Power BI reporting, or you know, this is these are the policies, this is how everything runs smoothly. So you have these in place, it's gonna help with that transition period for you. So, you know, if if you feel like um, you know, everybody, there's just one person that has the knowledge by creating the COE, that knowledge is now spread across the organization and it's and it's and it's well documented. So critical requirements of a center of excellence. So we'll go through these step by step. So on the next few slides, um, just basically going to go through um, each one of these. So with any project, with anything you do in your organization, you always have to have an executive sponsor. So that's always important. Um, and then that what comes with that executive sponsor are our champions or what we would call our Power BI champions. So those who are actually going to drive, you know, to drive basically your Power BI development, drive these different policies that you have in place, um, basically make sure, making sure that you know everything that the Center of Excellence is all about is adhered to. But um, you know that can't be done unless you have that executive sponsor. You got to basically have somebody that's saying, you know, this is how we're going to do it. And 
and he has that control to basically put the hammer down and say, nope, this is what we said, this is a corporate strategy, etc. Then we have our govern standards and policies. I'll get into that a little bit later in, in, in the next couple of slides, but those govern standards and policies are just like we were talking about earlier. You know, how do we build reports? What are our measures? What's that look like? And then continuous learning and constant engagement. So just like anything, no matter if it's Power BI reporting, if it's, you know, um, FP&A best practices, you know, anything inside your organization, you always got to be continuously learning. And that's what power and that's what the COE also is in charge of, as well as is constantly staying engaged with the end users of the Power BI reports throughout your organization. So let's kind of quickly go over some of these things. And again, if there are any questions, if you guys have thoughts, if you're like, hey, how would how would this fit into my organization? How would I actually, you know, what if what if we don't have a Power BI champion or or what if we don't have a defined report building process? If you have any questions like that, put them in the chat, you know, raise your hand, you know, happy for anybody to come off mute and uh, just, you know, let us know what, you, what your question is. So just always encouraging that interaction on the calls here. Um, so an executive sponsor and champions, and, and again, it's already assumes that you already have a vision in place for your BI initiatives. So if you don't have that vision in place, I would try to drive that throughout your organization or get that support from an executive level. If you don't have that, maybe it's because the size of your organization, that's fine. Maybe start doing that on your own and people will start catching on. But again, you got to have that. You got to have something in place where somebody's going to drive it from the top down. And then basically we come down here to the bottom. We need to know who's going to own the vision, who's going to execute it, and who's going to be responsible for getting everything done, right? So here's what we want to do with Power BI. Who's going to execute it? Our BI champions are. And then who's responsible for getting everything else done? You know, it's those BI champions. Are they division leads? Who is it? And then we're also going to start defining our teams at the end of the day. So if you're a smaller organization, you may have one team. If you're a large organization, you may have a team per division. And then they all center up to the main company center of excellence. So ideally, if I have 10 business units or 10, 10 departments across my organization, we could all have 10 separate teams because we're building those, those departments are building their own dedicated reports. But at the end of the day, they should basically be adhering to the same center of excellence policies as everybody else. So they may be a little tweaked, a little bit different because, you know, marketing may report things a little bit differently than finance because you know finance is maybe more focused on the you know the, the data matrix and, and things like that and um, marketing may be more focused on just having some high level kpis that they're looking at not really sure but those are some different ways that you know they may they may differ as far as you know reporting requirements are concerned um, we look at uh, continued learning and constant engagement so one thing that a uh, Power BI COE does or is responsible for is they're always in, they're they're in charge of making sure that you know that you that they're that uh, those that are building Power BI reports or those that are actually um, consuming Power BI reports they're aware of the latest and greatest associated with it. So uh, those of you that are on the call, you're probably aware that every um, every month Power BI comes out with a ton of updates. So one thing that we always encourage our end users at COE is having you know monthly lunch and learns that basically or or newsletters that say hey did you guys realize that small multiples is now available in Power BI be on the lookout for some for us using these and other reports coming up or did you know you can create bookmarks inside of the Power BI service here's how you do that um, we're going to start embedding Power BI reports in our teams because in, in Microsoft Teams because now that's available. You know, it's having those that different forms of communication and continuously teaching those end users of what's going on is key to this. Because again, a lot of these a lot of these concepts that I'm telling you about, they, they may seem like common sense. They're, they're simple practices, but again, it's focused on Power BI. It's all focused around that. So constant engagement, and that's with anything, right? So communication with with projects, anything inside the workplace. It's constantly communicating to your end users of Power BI and to your developers of what's going on. And, you know, as far as different tools that, you know, we've used in the past for constant engagement. I mean, we're a very Microsoft centric uh, uh, team, so we use Microsoft Teams to constantly, you know, distribute this information. So even us at Collective as a professional services consulting firm, we still use Microsoft Teams and there's always constant engagement and constant um, 
updates that are going on that we provide. So that would be the same thing a center of excellence should do. You know, you could create a center of excellence, Microsoft team. That's an idea you could actually utilize to where that's where maybe all your policies and all your documentation stored, which is the next slide I'll be going on to here in a minute. But it's also another it maybe your way of communicating as well. So, you know how you're actually going to say, hey, guys, new Power BI update. Take a look at this or hey, here's a here's a new DAX function or here's how you might actually use calculate instead of some X. All these different things. That's all what that's what the center of excellence is all about. All right, in my mind, the. Uh, probably the most important part of the center of excellence govern standards and policies so this is really critical because we need to when you're building reports out the biggest thing is is usually associated around your data it's associated around that process that i keep hammering on here <clears throat> all your policies about maybe who can see what reports so for example you know if you know, I'm part of the Western division and I log in and I can see the East and Central division. There's an issue there because I should only be able to see Western division. So how is how does role level security? How has role level security been implemented? How has that been tested to ensure that whenever I log in, I only see my data? Um, when I talk about report level security, um, maybe maybe I'm allowed to see um the financials maybe i'm not allowed to see the financial report but um you know jim is not allowed to see the financial reports because he's not part of the finance division you know he's just he's just in sales and he needs to be specifically focused on that so making sure that you have things in place like uh, ad groups and things like that basically defining all of that but then having a place to store that documentation so that again there's that you have this you have something called like a single version of the truth for your data but you have a single version of policies and ways that you actually do things um so going back down to certified data sets how do we maintain that certified data set what does the policy what does the process look like to certify that data set so let me give you an example of how this might work so let's say um let's say i'm building a measure and my measure is gross profit like i had mentioned just a little bit ago Maybe I just it's to simply just get gross profit. I take my revenue minus my expenses. OK, that's what I decide gross profit is. But maybe someone else on my team says no, 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 no. Gross profit is revenue minus ex minus expenses minus um, indirect labor um, because somehow indirect labor is not involved with its expenses. End of the day, there needs to be a process or a policy in place that determines whose measure is right. And before that measure can be put into your single version of the truth or your certified data set, it needs to be tested and it needs to be agreed upon. And you need to document it as to why it is the single version of the truth. Or there needs to be some process in place that says, yep, this is how we do it. And if that and that could change over time, right? You could then somehow determine that, okay, indirect labor is no longer, you know, subtracted out from revenue for gross profit. And um, now it's, you know, then we, then we revert back to what it was before. The whole idea is, is that you agree upon those measures, you agree upon how it's being placed into your data set and you and you move on. Now, depending upon the size of your organization, the size of your department, um, you're probably hearing me talk like, yeah, that sounds great, but if we go through all these policies and all these procedures, you know, we're never gonna get anything done. I mean, I totally get it. So there's a happy medium ground and, um, so that's something that you're just going to have to that's something you need to define within your organization to where it's like okay what is allowed to be pushed through and what doesn't have to be because you don't want to have to be spending all day you know waiting for something to be approved or what and that's pushing your reports back end of the day we're just making sure that this stuff is streamlined um, you have the right policies in place so that you know people can trust trust your data that's the last thing we want to do again right is to show them a an incorrect report or incorrect data, especially that maybe make it all the way up to your board. And then your board, you know, throws a fit because they're no longer um, the reports you're giving them are no longer accurate and they're upset. You know, you're upset. It's, it's never a good thing. Um, and then defining owners and how reports are updated and distributed to end users. So we, we you need to define those owners. You need to define who's in charge of what. That comes back to workspaces again and how you're going to distribute your reports. Are you, are, you, are you distributing them throughout Microsoft Teams? Are you distributing your reports 
through Power BI apps. You know, how does a report get added to an app? Who's in charge of doing that? You know, inside of our workspaces, we have different things called, you know, we have different users. You know, some are called members, some are contributors, some are viewers. You know, who's actually going to be a contributor in your workspace? Who's going to be the member that can actually then publish that to, you know, to your Power BI app? Clearly defining that and then clearly defining who can do what in your teams. That's all part of the COE. It's basically having it in place. And so it's it's a place to go back and reference. And again, I, you know, to kind of say what I mentioned earlier, if, if someone on your team leaves or if you onboard somebody onto your team, they need to have a location to where they say, look, OK, this is how we do Power BI reporting in our organization. These are the things you need to make sure that um, that you are adhering to whenever you're building a report, you know, go to go to you know, Jim, he's in charge of, um, you know, making sure that everything is the center of excellence. It has to go through him before we publish up to a workspace. Setting those owners, setting those leaders involved, that's, that's all a key piece to this. And then um, documentation. All this stuff needs documented. And um, when it comes to documenting BI, that's where we kind of come down to. Some of you may have heard of something called a reporting catalog. Um, if not, I'll kind of show you an example of what that's all about. Um, a measure dictionary. So anytime, you know, I talked about creating that gross profit measure. That's it. If it's a new one, that goes in the measure dictionaries to where I can go and query against that dictionary and find out, okay, this is how uh, this is how we've created gross profit or, or this is how we have, you know, this is how we have defined total expense or total sales, total sales last year, you know, and it, it actually has the DAX in there that, it, that shows you what that measure looks like. And then at the end of the day, a data dictionary that defines, you know, where's your source, where's your sources coming from? You know, where's, where's the data from Power BI um, being brought in from and um, all the different aspects associated with it. And then by doing that, we, we, we should hopefully be able to prevent the Wild West of reports. So like I said, that Wild West of reports is basically People don't know what's going on inside their organization because, you know, I've published a report to one workspace. Uh, my colleagues have published reports to another workspace, and it's just a mess. It's a chaotic mess because Power BI is so easy to use that people just start, you know, pulling data in from different data sources and publishing it up there. Which, again, Power BI, that's a great thing about it. It's easy, but we need to get a handle on it. And if you've already, if you've already kind of hit that wild west of reports in your organization to where you feel like you know it's kind of out of control you're you're not alone we see see this all the time but the time to start acting is now so you need to basically realize that you have the wild west of reports going on and then put a plan in place of how you're going to get away from there and maybe that's a maybe that's a matter of you know just um doing a reporting assessment first and analyzing okay where where are all of our reports at you know how can we combine others to where you know we're 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 going off that single version of the truth um, and then essentially taking those reports and putting them into a report catalog so doing that in a strategic fashion to where we understand okay here's all of our core reports if it's not in this list it should shouldn't be distributed out there. Let's let's take it down and make sure it's not available. So if it's not in these workspaces, if it's not these core reports, you know, get rid of them. And that's going to help you eventually get get out of that chaotic environment. And you know, if any of if any of you are in that environment, you have questions or if, you know some advice, let me know. Um, be happy to kind of share share some some ideas or expertise that I have. Um, we talked about that reporting catalog and measure dictionary. There's a couple different ways you can actually create the reporting catalog in a measure dictionary. Uh, we've done it a couple different ways. We've done it actually by using Power Apps to where you know every time you create a report, you go into a Power App, you can enter that report in, enter its workspace, and it's just a way of organizing things. Again, it's just like a folder structure inside of your you know Windows Explorer. It's a way to kind of make sure that um, it's a way to make sure that um, you're always on top of you're always on top of all your reports. Same thing with a measure dictionary. Um, there's some different ways you can do that. You can do that with a Power App. You can call the um, the uh, uh, Power BI API to actually extract that information. There's an, actually another tool here I'll show you about in a minute that actually allows you to do this as well. Um, 
and then we've created this uh, this reporting catalog and measure dictionary uh, report off of that. So you can see, you know, I'm going to show you an example of this. I'll end the slideshow here in a minute and just pull up a quick example of how this works. But basically, it's just a Power BI report that allows you to see, you know, where from your data sources, how many reports are built off of it by using that decomposition tree, how many reports you have deployed throughout your organization, you know, data sources, measures, owners of those reports whole nine yards so this is basically that centralized location that you can go to and say all right this is this is this is where everything's at i can query against it and kind of get back to where i'm you know get back to understanding where everything is at in our reporting world and uh, again this is all things that the coe would be in charge of so I just wanted to throw, um, put this brief slide in there. So um, one of the uh, the companies that we actually partner with and a tool that we actually partner with is uh, called Power BI Sentinel. So Power BI Sentinel is a it's a data governance uh, tool that could be part of your center of excellence. And what it actually does is it, it it does a few different things. So basically everything that you see around here. So it's a it's all it's utilized for for Power BI governance, disaster recovery because it backs up your reports and then it also does auditing on your reports as well. Um, it allows you to see kind of usage analytics, which is a key piece of the center of excellence as well, because usage analytics is going to help you understand how adoption is going on. So that should be managed or there should be a policy around how usage analytics is uh, is pretty well is more or less analyzed or who's in charge of that. Um, this also produces documentation, so it produces documentation associated with your reports. You know where are your reports at, um, where are the data sources associated with that, what's your M code from Power Query, as well as what are the what are your DAX measures that you're using, um, and then as well as data lineage. So the data lineage is you know okay where what are my data sources, and then you know from my data sources how does that get from there all the way to um, to my end report. So again, just a quick just something quick to throw out there if you're interested in Sentinel. You know, let us know. Be happy to kind of give show you a demo. Um, we actually have a Collective Academy um, event coming up, and I want to say that's in April um, that we're actually going to be presenting on Power BI Sentinel and showing you a de demonstration of that as well. So if this is of interest to you, keep an eye out for that one that's coming up the next month. So important considerations when it comes to Power BI, and these are things you need to decide up front because if you don't decide them, individuals inside of your organization are going to decide them for you. So keep these keep these things all in mind. So um, securing your data uploaded to the service, making sure that you know if that data needs to be locked down, how you're doing that. Um, if there's role of security put in, needs to be put on there, who sees it, who's in charge, basically making sure that you have that decided up front. Um, how you're going to publish data to the entire organization. Um, how you're going to share content with external users. So if you have maybe your clients, if you want to share data with, you know, with your clients, how is that supposed to be done? Is there a specific way you do that? Do you invite them into your Power BI tenant? Do you simply share the report? Are they allowed to share that report? Because again, if you don't put a policy in place for that, your end users, rightly so, are just going to think, hey, I think this is the right thing to do. My client needs to see this data. I'm going to share this report with them. There's some reasons why you may or may not want to do that. End of the day, you guys need to have a policy in place to make sure that is how it's done. Because the last thing you want to do again, like we said, Wild West reports, if people just start doing it on their own, then it's going to be so much harder to get Pandora's to get everything back inside of Pandora's box. Um, publicly accessible data. So you guys are all familiar with the um, with maybe if you're not, if you're familiar with Power BI, you may know the term of publish to web. So you can actually publish Power BI reports to the web. And um, but the problem is once you do that, that is publicly accessible data. So anybody that has that link could essentially have access to your data. So you don't want somebody to accidentally publish something to the web and you know has has all your finance report on there and you know information that nobody should really be seeing except for key individuals inside your department. So going into the Power BI admin settings, having somebody who's in charge, who's actually the Power BI admin, who can lock those things down, right? So that they can actually publish it to the web. Or if they do, what is the procedure to making sure that, yep, this report can go up there, we've checked it over, there's no critical information that can get us in trouble. So again, another policy, but a good policy that could save you a ton of headaches if you didn't have it in place. And then custom visuals. So custom visuals are great, 
problems sometimes with custom visuals are is they can either break, they go through updates. Um, sometimes updates break, re updates break reports. So end of the day, you just need to make sure that whatever reports are using custom visuals that I would, I mean, in my mind, I would, I would kind of bucketize those, or I would have some type of querying system that would say, okay, you know, my, my, my P and L report or my balance sheet are using these custom visuals. My sales analysis report are using these custom visuals. We need to kind of keep an eye out um, for them to make sure in case they go through an update, if, if, if that breaks the report or not, because, you know, Unfortunately, Microsoft does come out with updates and that does cause some of these custom visuals to break from time to time. And when they break, your end users are going to see that those, what your end users are going to see is they're going to see your reports not working and they're not going to care why it's not working. They just know it's not working and you want to kind of be a step ahead of the game to understand, OK, well, maybe, maybe it's a custom visual that's gone on there. We need to get, the, get a new one out there. Or we need to replace it with a different one basically being able to act you know on the ball when that happens and just having policies around that and i'm not saying don't use custom visuals because we at collective we use them as well it's just making sure that you're aware of you know which ones are out there and kind of have a plan in place in case they don't work all right um so this is kind of where we see at collective where we see the coe really kind of in place throughout an organization and again this is just um this is just our kind of idea of where it sits and this could be this could be tailored to any organization based upon where you want it but we kind of see it here at the same level as it your c-suite but at the end of the day and this could be also like different business units so this could, a business unit you could see above here or this could be organizational wise but it kind of sits above marketing finance and sales because the center of excellence like i was just explaining earlier if these were all individual departments for us they would all use the same standards um, but they may tweak them a little bit in, for their individual teams so everybody kind of needs to be using the same the same policies when it comes to data and things like that and then but these essentially could have their own coe teams depending upon the size of the organization so you could have a mini coe or a mini power bi team here uh finance same thing and same with sales it just depends upon the size of your org um, but this is this is one approach where we kind of see that architecture working all right so that's uh that's a little bit about um that in my mind that's 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 what i wanted to cover today as far as you know what the center of excellence is and the you know the key pieces associated with it i want to spend the next uh the next few minutes just going over some different uh different processes and different policies that you might want to consider to put into uh to put into play for you know a center of excellence um that first one you know one of those is going to be a report building process you know as far as uh, life cycle management and these things these things like that and we'll just kind of go through them as we see fit and if we run out of time we run out of time but um we should have enough here to kind of give you guys some more ideas of what you can do inside your organization. So one thing that uh, that we always encourage that needs to be a, a some type of process or policy is associated with you know Power BI development lifecycle. So when you're building reports, you should always put in place some type of dev test production or at least a dev production environment. And the purpose for that is so when I'm building a Power BI report, I want to make dang sure that, um, you know, when that thing gets published, um, it is met with all of the, it, it's production ready, right? The data is correct. It's laid out in the right format. We're using the right colors. Um, there's not too much going on. So it needs to pass all of our tests. And that's just done simply through a, a simple BI development lifecycle. And you can go as you can put these three steps in place. You can just use two It's whatever works for your organization. But you have different end users that are testing those reports before they actually get pub published out there to the, the wide masses throughout your organization for, for viewing. So there's a lot of different processes associated with this whole. I, the whole point I wanted to kind of put in place here was that just make sure you have something like this in place in your organization. Um, before I kind of go into the next piece, um, I talk about all these different policies and I talk about all these different uh, procedures, right? Um, end of the day, 
use the KISS method. So if you're not uh, if you're not familiar with the KISS method, my my English teacher in high school um, always used it. So keep it simple, stupid. Um, I'm not saying anybody on the call is stupid, but they called me that in school. No, joking. But at the end of the day, um, uh, that use the KISS method. Keep it simple and you know start small and iterate upon that. So like I said, if you don't have any policies in place, um, just start with one. Start with a simple one, and then as, at least you have one thing. And then if it doesn't work, iterate upon it. So just keep that in mind as you know as I'm going through these things, and you're thinking about how do you actually go about how do you go about actually implementing this throughout your organization. Um, a couple other key points about report building. So I'll go into some report building processes here after this slide. Is I've always said two things, and this kind of goes back. To this this works with no matter what industry you're in if you're building reports or if you're building houses you got to have the tools and i've always said you know you know if you're doing something efficiently if you want to do it even more efficient you got to have the right tools for the job so i say that power bi when it comes to building bi solutions when it comes to building reports power bi is the best tool out there um, it's definitely proven itself here over the last five years uh coming on to six now um but a follow up to that is every great tool still needs a great process. So even though Power BI is the best BI tool out there, it is nothing unless you surround it with a great process to build your reports out. So and I mean again that that's with anything. I could be I could be roofing a house with a nail gun, but if I don't know the first thing about nailing my shingles to a roof, I'm never going to get the job done. That's the same thing with a Power BI report. I, Power BI could be the best B business intelligence tool out there, but if I don't have a set of standards, if I don't know how to build DAX measures, if I'm not building them correctly or laying my report out the right way, it's never going to be adopted throughout my organization and it's going to fail. So that's what those, these are the two key points. I hope at least you, if you don't take anything away, you take this away that there is, you know, it is very important that you got to have the tools, but you still got to have that process. And the center of excellence is going to govern that process and ensure that it's it's done to the standards that you put in place. Okay, uh, so again, here's um here's just a simple FPNA report development process that you know I, I'd just like to share some of the, some of the ways that we do it here at Collective, um, and there's no right or wrong way. We we iterate upon this you know quite often, but uh, when it comes to building a report, you know always start off with a discovery session. That's a, that's one of the critical pieces of report building, understanding the, you know what you're trying to solve for your end users, um, asking the right questions. Uh, then we put a deliverable timeline in place after we hold that discovery session or if you have one in place before then you're going to need to adjust it maybe based upon some of the stuff that you've uh, you've discovered during that session then we go through the build review and, and reconcile phases and that's continuous so we build it we review great we iterate and that's kind of where the uat comes in the uat and validation so basically we build it this is what they want okay now we want to see a, a little bit of visualization change and then continuously improve upon it after it's been handed off, adding measures and things like that. So when we start off with that requirements gathering and discovery, we got all these different questions. So that requirements gathering, it's it's all different questions. You know, who's the report intended for? What are the key metrics? How are we going to slice and dice our data? Right? How are we going to? Um, what are the? That's usually associated with our dimensions. You know, are we looking at a? Are we looking at GL accounts? Are we looking at uh, department level, organization level? Um, time frame, date, year, month, I mean, um, quarter, all those different aspects. Um, also understanding where the data is at, you know, what's the ETL process to getting our data in here? Um, understanding all of these things up front so that you can pre be prepared for it throughout the, um, the development of your report. So what does that ETL process look like? Are we pulling from a SQL database? Are we gonna store our data in SharePoint? Um, is there transformations? We're going to do transformations in SQL. Are we going to do transformations in Power Query? Um, is it on-prem? Are we going to need a data gateway? All these questions you want to define up front before you actually um, start building your report because you don't want to be in the middle of building a report and then realize, oh, we didn't ask this question or we didn't know um, we didn't we didn't know that's where the data was going to be or we didn't know that um, we needed to create this DAX equation. You want to get all those questions up front and then what I would encourage you to do is if you you have these sessions come up with a template so that 
again, you have that templated list to where no matter who's um, building the report um, inside of your organization, they can check those things off so that you don't you don't get halfway down the report and say, oh shoot, we should have we should have asked for this. And then that causes, you know, delay in report build. You got to redo work that you shouldn't have done before. So keep that in mind as well. Then when it comes to report building, we want to make sure we maintain a consistent report approach to report building. And the reason for that is, is we because how we actually lay out our reports, what the consistency is with those visualizations, alignment, that's also going to drive adoption. So if I'm looking at a report in my organization and I'm comfortable and it's similar to all my others, it may not show the same metrics, it may not show the same visuals, but if the layout, the theming, and the consistent, if there's consistency across all of that, that's going to help with adoption. It's going to people are just going to be more become more comfortable with it, and they're going to start using your reports more time, you know, more and more. Again, I talked about color consistency and making sure that you know. You're using correct colors. There's a, there's a whole different theory. I mean, we could go on and on for days on color theory when it comes to reports. But using colors that makes sense, right? Don't don't just use the full rainbow colors on your report. Use stuff that actually, you know, if you're comparing data, there's a there's a significant difference between that. So, for example, here we have black and orange that shows. Okay, I can clearly see. Um, not sure, what happened there? I can clearly see the difference between my data on here, right? So kind of keep those things in mind. And then the last thing that um, I always I always ask everybody is, you know, when they build that report out, can that report tell a story at a glance? So if I just if I pull this report up, I should be able to look at that without having to think too much to say, OK, yep, my revenue is up this quarter or my revenue is down. My my expenses are going through the roof, so I should be able to look at that. And uh, it should tell me that story initially without me, like I said, without me having to think too hard about it. All right, and then um, so guys, that's the um, that is what I had. I mean, I could go on and on for days, I think, with um, with all the different processes and all the different policies that are associated with um, with the center of excellence um, and how that relates back to data governance and adoption. But um, yeah, interested if there's any questions, but you know how you can get started here is you know if you're just wondering, well, how do we how do we even start this in our organization? You know, one, just get involved, um, understand your business a little bit better, um, so you can actually hopefully figure out how you could start implementing this in your um, implementing this throughout your organization. Find those champions, so you don't want to have to do it all. Hopefully, um, who are going to help you? You know. Who's going to help you implement the center of excellence? Who's going to help drive adoption, drive governance, make sure you're doing it the right way? So identifying them inside of your org and you know putting those best practices, um, develop your process and document. So it's not just so these are some of the some of the different processes that I've recommended. You don't have to use mine. Make sure you, whatever you develop, just make sure you stick with it and then iterate upon it. It's never set in stone, you know. Always be adapted to change so that you know you're constantly improving and then start small and grow. Don't do the fire hose approach. Don't say we're going to do all of this at once because if you do that, it's it's just going to be so much harder to adopt. So use that kiss method. Keep it simple. Start small and then grow up, grow up on it. Um, and then start building a, a business case to support your different processes and the ideas that you're going to put in place. So if you're having if you're struggling with kind of getting, you know, buy in for this, you know, build up your business cases. You know, if, if, if you're seeing the wild west of reporting going on in your organization, if you just feel like, you know, you're just starting with Power BI and you haven't hit the wild west of reports, use this, use these ideas to really encourage your organizations to put the COE in place. Um, and at the end of the day, center of excellence is just a term. I mean, you're just organizing all of these different policies into a, into a location. So you can call it your, your BI excellence or whatever it is. So it's just a term that you can call and create whatever you like. And then just a call to action. I just challenge everybody on the call today to take at least one thing you've learned here and uh, try to implement that or in your organization. So even if it's just a corny joke that I had said at the beginning, you know, you use something inside of your use something that I've mentioned here today, um, utilize that throughout your organization. And uh, yeah, that's my challenge for everybody on the call. That being said, uh, would love to answer any questions that you have. Um, thanks again for attending, guys. Like we got about seven more minutes before the top of the hour, so um, 
yeah, what, uh, if there's any questions, let me know. Otherwise, that does conclude uh, the presentation for today. Or maybe everybody is an expert now at COE and we're going to roll it out throughout our organization. Hi everyone, I want to put um, links to all of our socials in the chat if you'd like to go and take a look at them. Um, there is a lot of, of the same information and a lot more information pertaining to this subject. Um, if you'd like to go take a look and um, later today you will be see receiving an email with a link to this recording. Awesome, thanks Chloe and thanks again everybody. Um, yeah, thanks again for joining. If you have, ever have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Always happy to help. So thanks for everyone, atten everyone who attended. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for other Collective Academy trainings like this one here on the Collective website.